Well, here we are again. Um, you know, I, every time I think, now I'm going to do this without any glitches, but, you know, I don't know whether there were or there weren't, but we're on. And uh, I'm very lucky to have you, Medina, because obviously you were having a few issues trying to get yourself online at all. That's uh, true. <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> but we're here. <laughs> you, know, you know, this is what I love about doing lives because... <laughs> you know, once upon a time we would do everything and make sure everything was perfect and perfect, as I say so often, is the end of everything and there's nothing to grow from. So, you know, it's not something to strive for. And and for me, uh, it's about allowing yourself to be real and true in the moment. And um, and so, yeah, it's good. Um, I always enjoyed the bloopers, you know, that you got after us after they had this perfect sort of looking thing and then you saw the bloopers and you saw, you know, and they're far more funny and interesting than the things that, that they had edited I remember on. that when I do my videos. <laughs> That's a good tip. <laughs> okay. So, um, we we'll say, look, welcome again. And, and everyone who, you know, he, who's here, welcome. We had a wonderful um discussion last week about um creating you know birthing this new earth human and uh and you know you have um screened that also on on your um platforms and how was the response do you feel to to that discussion fantastic i think it said about oh from memory about 360 views or something so that's pretty good you know and i got some lovely feedback from you know um some people so yeah very positive and um i certainly think it's a discussion that you know needs to be had and you know that was the feedback i got as well so yeah that's great and i think you know the, the part one we really um looked at what a new earth human would look like so we looked at the possible characteristics and and what we would be striving for within ourselves and um you know, when you really look at that uh, series, it is really who we are in here. You know, that is our natural state of being when we peel off all the programmed and conditioning of, of eons of enslavement and fear-driven programming. So, um, you know, it's just, it's not something that we have to become. It's something in a way that we have to unbecome. In fact, I've heard, and I actually resonate with this, that um, whenever we have a negative thought or a sort of a heavy or a dark or negative thought, it's actually not even us, but it's the programming that's coming to us, maybe frequency, weaponry, who knows, you know, I don't want to get into um, too much, you know, negative stuff. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on that's influencing our mind and our thought processes. And, and there is that uh, theory that we actually don't, if, you know, in our best environment and in our best circumstance, we don't have those negative thoughts normally. No, and, and you know, the thing about that is for me um, is when, the more that we find of our true nature and our true self, the less influence that has. But at the moment there is, you know, I, I love these sort of things that, that the, the controllers grab to instill fear. And, you know, they've been very good at that and we've been very poor at recognising it and we've been very good at just collapsing into that. But we're becoming smarter, I think, and the new earth human doesn't do that. But what I'm seeing at the moment is this, um, there's, a new, there's a new thing on the block called the AI, be afraid of the AI. Well, I have some news for everybody. We are AI. In other words... AI stands for artificial intelligence. Well, from the moment we're born, we are artificially imprinted with an intelligence of somebody else. Yes, yes. Wow. We're, we're, That's we're, we're, from so many genetic um, sort of um, realms, <laughs> a DNA, you know, is it 22 different uh, galaxies? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the, the influences through our culture and our religions and our education. Oh, okay, sure. Are intentionally, yes, artificially imprinted. Yes. 
the enslavers want us to perform like. Sure. So you're talking about cultural conditioning, all that sort of thing. All yeah. of that. So yeah. and, and so when we really acknowledge that and you look at yourself and you go, well, hang on, that's what they've been doing to us. They're just putting it into a machine. But we're the machine they've been using before that. Mm. Yes. And so all the work that you and I are doing is to bring people back to remembering that we are creation in motion. And I keep saying we are creation in motion, we're creation in motion. So part two that we're about to embark upon here, and, and for those of you who haven't seen part one, I do encourage you to do so um, because, you know, it is a step-by-step -step process like all of what we're doing. And part two... I was really guided to talk about living consciously. It's something that has that is becoming more and more prevalent in my awareness is living consciously. Now, what does that actually mean? Yes. Good so question. for me, <laughs> it is living in the absolute present now moment mm -hmm. and picking up my cup intentionally consciously without my thoughts going anywhere else and then having my sip of tea i love my tea mm, savoring mm. the taste <laughs> savoring the taste yes, and, yes. The warmth, and feeling the warmth on my cold hands because i'm in melbourne it's freezing today oh and at the same time being able to be present with you and to be consciously aware of what words are coming out of my mouth, what intentions I have behind those words and what vibrational frequency I'm radiating as a result of those words and those movements. So, you know, we do every, we're robots. So much of our time is spent robotically in reaction to what we have in front of us. And so a new earth human is completely different because they live, we will live in this innate knowing that we are creation in motion. Therefore, we are conscious of every bit of energy that we radiate. And yes. that's the journey. It reminds me of a book by Jean-Paul Sartre. You know, he talked about existentialism. And there was a character in the book, um, uh, uh, the name escapes me, very famous book. But anyway, this uh, main character, he ended up, um, because of his way of being 100% present in the moment, if he did something, ended up going to jail. But he was in jail and he was 100% present and he was looking out the window. And he didn't, because he didn't think about the future, it wasn't really a concern because he was just looking out at the sunshine out through the window in the jail. And it, it really summed up, the essence of existentialism, what it is, because he he wasn't um, concerned about, you know, the past or the future. He was just right in the moment and he was just really enjoying that sunshine landing on his face, even though it was a small cell with a small window in the cell and he was just 100% present. I thought, wow, that really sums up what that means. And, and, and so it's also being in your body, 100% embodied in your body, knowing how your body's feeling, um, really um, being, you know, 100% present right here, right now and grounded as well um, on Mother Earth. Um, that's another important factor. So um, to master the art of presence is probably really a lifetime journey because it's um, something that you can always work on more and more. And to be fully in our joy, we have to be 100% present as well. Um, you can't manifest or co-create things as successfully unless you are 100% present or at least, you know, have some presence within you. Um, I did actually, just a story, I did, and I know she's probably cabal or whatever, but many years ago I met Kylie Minogue at a party and we were chatting and she had 100% presence. And you've got to say she didn't manifest all the stuff. <laughs> but she was really, really present. Like her focus when she looked at you, she really 100% focused on you and she had all her focus and energy and concentration on you. 
and um, you could really feel it. It was very, very powerful. So she probably was um, a good manifest, even though, you know, we know a lot of these people have been into things that we don't approve of in, in, in any way. But, you know, uh, I just did notice that. Well, I don't know she... that. You don't know that. So we will leave that to the maybes possible. <laughs> Yes, yes, uh, the divine knows, and that's all that matters. <laughs> yes. Also, you know, I've learned through this times because there's so many, there's so, been so much finger pointing, and you know, uh, supposition and all of that. And for me, I always address the good in everything, the good in everyone. And so, rather than worrying about what they will have to, what we all have to pay the hard before you know in karma um let's just just focus on you know the beauty and the good of nature the beauty and the good of each other there's also another part of being a new earth human but you just opened a real pandora's box and i don't know what about <laughs> because i've just lost the plot <laughs> um, no. okay so let's go to um you know what does it mean to be completely Present when you're talking about you know being in the cell and just and, and being able to be in the moment, that kind of reminds me of Mandela who always said, "You can you know you can take my body and you can do it, but you can never have any power over my mind." And I think that is probably the biggest lesson that we have to um, we have to learn is to stop giving our mind away. And so there are many things that that are. Um, in our in our past and in our present that keep us away from living consciously one of them is i think most powerful is distractions we are yeah. constantly being distracted it's like um i remember when my you know my eldest son who's now in his, his 50 i he was a baby model and um i and he you know, we're sitting there with the photographer and, you know, they're all going, over here, smile, do this, do that. You know? mm -hmm. um, he was very easy. He just sat and did what he was supposed to do. But, but you know, that's what we do. We go, come on, you know, see when children need to have their photos taken. You know, come on, you know, over here, smile to mommy. Yeah. yeah. So, but isn't that what is fed to us all the time if you turn on any kind of media open any magazine the amount of co commercialism is ridiculous you know i used to um like getting my magazines um you know with some um, purpose in them and so, some sub substance in them and then they just more and more of the pages became commercials yes that's true and there was and, almost no substance. And so that has become the biggest distraction. You know, it's like the chinkets. You know, it's like having the, having the rattle for the baby. Over here, over here, over here. And we're constantly distracted from the present moment, from that appreciation in the small cell of the sunshine because we're too busy trying to get to the rattle and, to, you know, all the, all the gratuitous so being distracted and this is why meditation is so important and i you know people say i, I can't meditate well let's take the mystique away and know what meditation means meditation simply means focusing on one thing so that is why so many of you know the real mystics tell you to sit with a candle and and just observe the flame because that brings you to that one moment, that single observation of focus, and it, it bleeds out the distractions. That's what we really supposed to learn to do in meditation. And so that is vital for us to realize that, you know, <laughs> sit. <laughs> Hello, I got um, a little yeah, two seconds. <laughs> See, this is what live TV is about, what live dream is about. I just love that. And by the way, that beautiful painting that you just saw is one of Medina's art 
very good so, and i love that it's so gorgeous so it's the distractions you know we're constantly distracted <laughs> like by <that>. dog. <laughs> <laughs> i suppose my door so my my you know fur babies which are two cats that usually walk in front of the screen and all you see is their bottoms and their tails which is not really friendly <laughs> okay so what I, I encourage people to do is to um to look at their lives and go what what do i give you know what distractions do i give my power to that takes me away from being able to be consciously present in in the moment mm. that's one of them so i'd like you to talk about distraction for a while because i have another one sure well one of the major ones that is the culprit i think for so many people and so many younger people as well is the mobile phone of course you know oh. you go out and everyone's got their head in their phone i, I went for a walk around the oval the other day and, and there was a young boy and i, I was going to say hi to him you know i was just all happy to say oh hi hi and he just wouldn't stop looking at his phone. <laughs> it's frustrating in the past you get to say hello to people and you know now it's just a way of avoiding you know and ignoring and and um, um, you know, not engaging. It's it's it is a um, way of um, really uh, going against um, organic relationships in in a sense. So yeah. um, that's a major one that stands out. Then there's things like um, consumerism, materialism. You know, if I just buy that new dress, then I'm going to feel better. Or if I just, um, you know, if I eat um, my favourite um, meal for lunch, um, you know, I'm going to feel better. All distractions. So the the everything that we are doing sort of in a sense that's not just being still and present and in the moment is a distraction i mean a major distraction is the fact that we have to um, earn income earn money and order to pay for our bills in order to so-called survive and so we spend so much of our time engaged in uh, work and um, just trying to you know earn an income and it's, you know, ideally what you want to have in terms of balance in your life is at least putting, I would say, a, a quarter of your time into self-nurturing, into um, internal work, into things to do with, um, um, you know, really uh, supporting your own self and your self-evolution. So a quarter of the time, if we look at that in terms of our schedules in a week, most people wouldn't be doing 25% of, you know, that. But I think that, that most, if, if you, if someone writes down the percentages of how they spend their time in the week, they'll probably find that a huge chunk of it is to do with work and to do with um, earning the money that they need to get by and or what they, what they think. Um, and, and then that, of course, is encouraged by the whole materialism thing, which says we need this, we need that, we need a house, we need a mortgage, we need da-da-da-da-da in order to you know fit in in order to be part of the society and blah 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 and then, <laughs> then there goes all our time because we've got to earn all this money to pay for it all so you know that's one of the biggest distractions and you know i went against the tide there because my partner and i for many many years you know we we just got a caravan and a van and drove around <laughs> around Australia and didn't engage in all that stuff so um that was great <laughs> um but you know it was it, at, at times you know it was it, it was hard to um you know we, we obviously had had a, a minimal I mean I had work and everything that I was doing but it wasn't like we had um you know big income or anything but we were able to get by and we didn't have to fit into the whole societal conditioning of you know the enslavement of the nine to five and all that sort of thing i couldn't do it anyway you know for at least 15 years i haven't really been able to engage in that because i've just my energy is different i can't do that <laughs> it's not my thing at all um so uh you know that that that's all distraction you know i i i would say in, in terms of a positive um form of distraction this morning before i got on chatting to you um, I was given um, a commission to do of a soul painting and I was so I focused meditatively on this person's um, energy and their soul and I went into that and then I got this sort of vision of what it was and then I I went into a zone and I was um, 
just like it's like a meditation it was like going into this zone where i'm just focusing on on this painting and um i, I lost track of time <laughs> as you do and but i didn't i knew i had to come and talk to you so i had that in the back of my mind but i did lose track of time and and i and i sort of stopped at 11 thought oh my god i've got to walk my dog <laughs> this sort of thing so you know but i went into this zone and, and it was a hundred percent in sort of occupying all my energy and all my attention and all other things were gone so this was like um being in that moment and being in in that sort of divine flow of energy which is really really beautiful it's so nurturing for the soul and creative you know <laughs> You keep saying uh, last week about how amazing and serendipitous and synchronistic it is how one person says something and something else. So I just wrote down something that absolutely segues into what you just said, and that is the new earth, that is our relationship with work. Yes. So the, you know, the new earth human will not be working for an income. No. No, not at all. They'll have their needs met in that way. So it's no, no, no. no. Can I? Can I? Sorry, but but, but I just wanted. Yeah, you know the reason is, and this is really what part three is going to be about. The new Earth human is a conscious creator. So mm. therefore, but but that's not the point. The new Earth human will only do work that the soul requires it to do in other words only do what you and i are doing we are we are fulfilling our soul mission in service to humanity and the new earth human will do that knowing that once you do that all is supplied people say to me they say oh my gosh i can't believe all the things you do i mean my list of stuff that i do is huge i've got so many things i'm working with and working on but I'm able to do it because I'm fueled by divine energy because it is soul work and it's it, it's sort of like um, it creates more energy by doing it because you're, you're feeding your soul. And, um, you know, an example of that is um, we're putting together a documentary called The New Golden Age. And, oh, my God, when I get involved in that and we, we went out to shoot it and everything in these stunning locations with these amazing people and, and and when I think about that project and putting energy into that I just get so excited and it's so um, inspiring for me and and so that energy creates more energy so then you've got more energy to do more things you know and um, so yeah it's interesting how it works so, so you know it's like again you said um, I forgot time. Mm. And is we, we we when you're in the zone, mm. you you get to a place where there is no time, there is no distraction, there's no interruption, there's pure consciousness. Yes. Pure yes. consciousness being expressed through you, for you, with you, according to what I call your encoded authentic self and that is just you know that is pure heaven that's the zone that <laughs> you want to get to <laughs> well my dad you know everyone gets to it so differently my dad says that he would get that when he he used to do a lot, lot of bushwalking he's older now but he would get it through bushwalking yep. you know i get it through creative things like making the documentary through painting through singing through music you know those sorts of things and meditation as well but you know uh, there's so many ways that will speak to your soul that are different to someone else that is is your way of getting to that space yeah and you know and it, it's this this zone is when you are in your in in the purest that is possible to be in this state that we are in and and we need to really hone in on that and we need to expand on that and so the new earth human lives in the zone in that zone of and which is direct connection to source it is you know you're talking about you know what what is in your zone my i'm in my zone right now right this is what i this is my mission my mission is to to 
be the sage, to be the wisdom keeper, to to bring, you know, this wisdom down from wherever it is and, and express it through words and deeds. And so that's... No, I am too. I love it. <laughs> I love it. It's you, know. fun. you can tell because it makes you smile, it makes you happy and raises Absolutely. your energy, lifts you up, you know, that that's a signal straight away that you're in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was talking to a, a gentleman yesterday. We actually said goodbye to one of our community yesterday and, and uh, she didn't want to have the usual funeral. She wanted to have um, a party. She was a party girl, loved love social that. stuff. I love that. So they had this barn and it was all, you know, with, with fairy lights and lots of martinis because that's what she liked. And and I just could feel her dancing around, and it was just so beautiful. But anyway, one of the gentlemen there, um, he had found my book in in amongst her things, and he was saying he couldn't put it down. And he was, I said, well, I started to talk to him, and at one stage, so he met other people of our community, and he goes, you know, I'm looking at you all, and you all have something in your eyes that tells me that you know something that I don't. And and I went, that's it, isn't it? That's <laughs> it. When we find that space, that zone, that, that, that true connection with source, then there is nothing that really can distract us. It is all, it just keeps pulling us back. And the new earth human in its state of pure consciousness has, it's, it's to do with intention. It, you know, it's in, it's an intentional movement. I intentionally pick up my cup. You know, I intentionally speak with you. It's all about that, the intention and behind that goes the biggest, another one that stops us from stepping into this new human that we are to become, whether you like it or not. I've got, you know, apologies, but that's where we're going. Um, <laughs> is the lack of accountability. Right, yes. Well, people find it intimidating sometimes to confront their own shadow self, to confront the things that they need to look at in order to evolve and to grow. And I guess it takes people to be ready consciously to be able to look at themselves um, really honestly and to say, you know, what do I need to work on on myself? You know, everything can be worked on. Everything is energy. You know, there's nothing that you can't work on. Um, but I think, you know, when you first come to that point where you're ready to work on it, it can be quite overwhelming and intimidating for people. And I think that that's, you know, about the accountability. It's much easier to say, oh, it's um, my partner. He's been really badly behaved <laughs> or it's um, somebody else, a neighbour down the street or, you know, it's a work colleague who's the problem. But always that um, is in your reality so that you can bring it back to yourself and look at what you need to work on yourself. And that is just really a um, soul who's come into probably got a soul contract with you or something with an agreement to show you what you need to be shown in order to learn what you need to learn. And um, so it, it is very easy when you are... Um, sort of in fear or emotionally um, triggered easily or um, you're just in a place of, um, I guess, um, ego where you, where you think um, I am pretty great, it's everyone else around me. <laughs> and, you know, when you, when you talk about dissolution of the ego, that's also what we, we were talking about previously, which is... Um, being in that zone is, is dissolution of the ego as well because it's like your individual identity, your I self, just sort of disappears and goes away and you become part of the greater whole. It's like, you, you, it's like you're not an individual being. It's like you don't have that sort of ego self. And, and, and so that, that is something that we're sort of dissolving more and more in order to get to this new earth human. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and the other part of the accountability that we avoid is we are responsible. In other words, that, you know, it is because we are the creators of our reality and I'm going to really address that, I mean, you know, further, but 
because that is the truth you know we are energy in motion and whatever energy we're, we, we're radiating is you know it's an electromagnetic thing emotion um, energy in motion <laughs> that's what it says you know yeah, yeah. Emotion. yeah and so but we have been so programmed out of having any self-belief that we you know that we're capable that we you know i mean that the not enough has been in i reckon that's been injected in us right mm. nothing's ever enough we're never enough and so so then we become afraid you know self-doubt is such an you know that it that's an injurious emotion to you know or belief to have self-doubt it eats away at us and it eats away at our, our power that we have inside and so this huge bridge that that humanity has to cross to leave behind that misinformation that we are not capable that we haven't that we're not enough that we're not you know um because we have to accept full responsibility for who we are what we say what we think what we do mm. and not well, turn around yes. and give that to somebody else and mm. so what we've done over the years is that we've given that power to somebody else and that is why the enslavers can tell us what to do because we don't have the faith within ourselves to actually have that full response ability, the ability to respond by choice for our highest good. Um, so we hand it to somebody else. There's so many points I could make from that. <laughs> Where do I go next? <laughs> well, <laughs> there's a lot of things in there. Well, um, one thing I was just going to say was the considered the number one UK um, so-called therapist um, is Marissa Peer, and she says her major thing that she says to clients often is to really um, integrate the words and if they have to repeat them and use the affirmation over and over is I am enough you know to write it up on their walls put it on their fridge put it on the mirror I am enough because most people she says that come into her say um you know that they have these self-worth issues and they just don't feel like they're enough so you're right very very indoctrinated on every level um, so that we can be controlled by our controllers, you know, since the moment that we set foot in this, um, you know, realm. And I think um, that people need to really um, know that they're divine, infinite creator beings. We have God within us. We are part of God. We are God. And people don't like it when you say we are God, but you know what I mean? We are God in a sense. And um, so, you know, if we're God, well, there's nothing that we can't do. We're infinite. So um, wrapping our heads around that and really understanding the infinite potential of what that means is something that is really good to focus on focus our attention on because i think it scares people our it's that saying that our true potential is much more fearful for people than thinking about the things that are the problems in their life oh yes absolutely and you know when we say this god consciousness is who we are but you know what what accountability means is the buck stops with you we have mm. to stop pointing our finger because you know the three fingers are pointing back at you that ugly thing um <laughs> so <laughs> and so you know this this thing about um always always looking for someone to blame always for something there must be a reason for this there must be a you know when we to be purely living consciously means that in every moment you are aware of the impact that you're putting out there. Mm. And if you are aware of that, why would you put impact out there that is going to come back and bite you in the bum? That's, you know, that's, that's where the buck stops with you. When you become love, love becomes you. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's, that's really nice. Bump the sticker, definitely. <laughs> um, there, there's um, that thing of, you know, when something percept perceivably goes wrong in your reality, 
it's not saying, oh, I'm a victim. You know, that's the major thing that many people do is to say they're a victim, going into victim consciousness. But it's to say, okay, um, this has happened to me. What is behind this? You know, what could be the qualities that I'm learning through this experience that perhaps I don't currently embody, that I don't, that I don't have in the world, that maybe I need to learn? What's this? So, for example, someone treats us badly, and we have to learn unconditional forgiveness. You know, would that be a quality that is um, an important priority for our soul to learn at this time? And then when we have fully um, embodied that quality and we've really understood the lesson behind that, the, the physical circumstance just disappears. It goes away because there's no need for it anymore. You might get a few continual lessons just to make sure that you've got the message <laughs> that you've learned it that are similar. But, you know, basically it's always going in underneath and saying, okay, this is a learning opportunity. What is it teaching? That is the one. You know, I always say everything is offering you a gift. Every bit of pain is That's offering you a gift. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. right. Open it in the present <laughs> with your gift. Um, you know, you know as well as I do, and I think when people examine their lives, that the most painful times in your life have actually been the greatest gifts. Because yeah. you know what it does is it forces you to look somewhere other than out there. It forces you to look within. To find what you know it's always alerting you that there's more of you that you haven't discovered yet so it's, when we collapse into that victimhood mm -hmm. we, you know all that we're doing is to ask for a, a bigger whack <laughs> mm. you know because we're not using it for you know our greatest good we're using it for our lesser good and so when we learn to look at problems as an opportunity for change, then we go, oh, there must be something in me that I haven't discovered yet that is asking to be now, you know, expressed and shown and used. And that, again, is part of this living consciously. It is reminding yourself that everything that, that comes your way is telling you something not about out there, it's telling you something about you in here. Absolutely. And, you know, that is what conscious living is all about. It's what are you telling me? What is this telling me? What is the gift in this situation? And that is both for the good and, and, and the challenging. Well, you can do it for everything. Absolutely. Can I know that for a fact? Because um, one thing that happened to me was um, my um, baby daughter passed at birth and so when you go through an experience like that, you know, you could easily collapse in a heap and, and say, oh, you know, da-da-da, <laughs> this has happened to me. But what I did was I, you know, I did feel like I went into quite a dark uh, hole, a bit of a tunnel, but, you know, I, I started writing um, to sort of express it in words and, and, and as a cathartic thing to release. But then what I realised retrospectively when I look back at that was um, there were multidimensional meanings why that situation occurred. But it really, number one, taught me that I had incredible resilience because I would have people come to me and they would go, oh, my, you know, I'm so sorry, and then they'd burst into tears and I'd be comforting them <laughs> and making them feel better. So I, and it's like, you know, um, then we're going through this current phase at the moment, which is, you know, can be quite intense, you know, these last few years and, you know, this real transition phase that we're going through. And, you know, seeing people that are impacted by this, you know, you, it takes a certain level of strength and resilience. And I say to myself, well, I got through that back then and that made me stronger and I know how incredibly strong I am and that serves me in really good stead right now for for everything that we're going through and this allows me actually to have a platform to help a lot of people because um partly because you know that experience happened to me and and it, it was a very steep learning curve but it was really on so many levels it was incredible um 
a credible gift, believe it or not. Um, and, and people might find that hard to understand, but it was. You know, I see that so often because, um, you know, parents who lose children and they use that opportunity for the most incredible growth. You know, they, they, they gift their energy to other things that I, as you have done. And it is about resilience. I, you know, at my stage of life, and I know I talk about it a lot, although I, I was told once by Mary Kay, she told me that, you know, a woman who tells of her age will tell you anything. But I'm really, really, I'm really happy with the fact that of the resilience of this body. You know, I get up every morning and I look at my feet and I go, how far have you walked, you little platforms? Have you ever thought when you look at your body that those little platforms, no bigger than your hand, hold you up? You know, it's a miracle in itself, I think. Yes. So, you know, and then we just take that for granted. We just hop out of bed and we think about, I've got to have my coffee. And no, look at your feet and go, thank you. You know, I, I every morning I am so in, in awe of the resilience of this physical expression of myself. Absolutely. And, absolutely. You know, and I go, wow, obviously I'm here and I've got still a mesh mission because I'm just leapt out of bed and I, you know, I had to laugh a few, uh, just before we went into the, the, the shutdown situation. Um, I was running a small workshop and I had a young man who came um, and he'd never been before and he was sitting there and, and uh, we, we had been talking for a little while and I knew it was time for a break. So I just leapt up out of my chair and said, ah, time for a cuppa, let's go. And then, you know, the, a few days later, his partner said to me, my goodness, you know, my friend, he was just, he kept talking all the way home. But she's, she's in it, you know, she's 80 and she's, she just leapt out of her chair. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, but, you know, but that's the, the, what you talked about before. That is the the energy from source. Yes. You know, it's a direct energetic f fuel mm. because you are living your mission. You are doing the work of soul. Mm. And when you do the work of soul, you are energized by soul you are supplied by soul and mm -hmm. you are able to live consciously in that zone mm -hmm. and, and take full, full accountability for every thought you think, every word you speak, every deed you enact. And that is, that's one of the hardest things for humanity to actually swallow, that the buck does stop with me. I but think that is the power. Yes, yes, yes. I think one way to also really help with that process, um, and I know, again, it may sound a little cliched, but it is to be really in extreme gratitude of every moment, you know, having gratitude for your mm. breath and your breathing, having gratitude for your body, which is what you were just mm. talking about, mm. having gratitude for the sunshine, for the ability to get up and do things, to, you know, there's so many things we can be grateful for. And, um, you know, that, that gratitude is a fuel in itself, the energy of that. Gratitude to me is, you know, that old thing about uh, open, open sesame, you know, to get the door of the magician open. Well, yes. I think that thank you. Yes. It's the secret. Yes. Key to that. When we leave, live in gratitude, we open the doors to more. More gratitude, absolutely. It's so well, true. Well, more of what you're grateful for. Yeah. So if you're grateful for ha your health and your resilient body, then that's more of that you receive. If you're grateful for every small amount of beautiful food that you're given, then you get more of that. If you're grateful for every loving relationship that you have in your life then you'll have more of that if you're grateful for every little amount of money that you have that opens the door to more but you know we spend so much time in in fear of lack that we that it 
we're distracted of being grateful for what is and what we have. And so that's yet another way that we are taken of being consciously aware humans, you know, in, in the new earth human form. And another way that we're taken off track is to be in comparison of others. Oh, yeah, I love that, that one. Person, that person has way more money than I do. <laughs> I've got that. You know, it's, you know, everyone's soul path is so unique based on, you know, many, many uh, lifetimes. And, you know, we can't know another's path, you know, what they've been through. And, you know, we it's all just about focusing on your own journey and um, not in any way comparing. You know, that's in that very famous um, piece of writing starting with S. What's that called again? <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, in a lot of toilets. You know, you go in and then people have got a frame. Oh, I've, I've gone blank on it. it. People will know that are listening. But it, it, it says very clearly in that it's got a lot of sort of great ideas about how to live your life. You know, if you compare yourself to others, you're bound to either be superior or otherwise inferior. So it's it's going to work against you either way. And and comparison is um, really a tool of the dark. So it's just the ability to run your own race and to find the the beauty and the joy in in even the most simplest things that you have around you. You know, a butterfly flying past, you know, all those sort of things, you know. Um, oh, I've got a story about that, actually. I <laughs> I was I was guided. One morning I was guided to record a song. So I recorded this really beautiful song by George Harrison. And I recorded it and then I sat there and it was just like a meditation again. It was so beautiful. And then I looked next to me at the curtain inside and there was this giant butterfly inside now we never open our windows or doors because at that time we had all these midges around um and and we wouldn't have opened them because you know it lets all the midges in so we didn't let it in through a door or a window but it manifested there as a, in a spirit you know sign manifesting um just because i'd done this beautiful song and i was in this beautiful meditative zone and it was a Thing of beauty and, the, and there was a butterfly right on my curtain next to me after I recorded it was incredible and, you know and these are the magical things that occur and we have kind of no rhyme or reason for um, I remember some time ago when I did a podcast with my friend um, Sovereign and on in, in Bali and he was sitting there and we were talking about um, what was the insect we're talking about um, dragonflies yes and how we love dragonflies and you know as we were talking a dragonfly a huge dragonfly just flew into you know into the camera view and sat on his knee and it, <laughs> you know, and we, we were just dumbfounded we we're just going okay <laughs> Call that in, and I think that's another thing that we're going to learn as new earth humans. We, will I, I, I'd call... love to tell people, please go to check out my artwork on my website. I've got three dragonflies on there: <laughs> one's pink, one's black, and one's white, like backgrounds. <laughs> so, yeah, and, you know, yeah, because they're so special, and so we call call these when we are in the zone. When and you know that 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 when we are the pure conduit and that means that we need to surrender we need to surrender our ego self as you you know you said and we need to do that consciously we need to make that discernment that choice and going okay you know i find being human a real struggle but i'm here for a reason and maybe if i just allow that reason to come forward and to live for through me and for me it will not be a struggle and it doesn't it isn't a struggle anymore everything when you has, surrender it's not a no, struggle because you're it, handing it up to god let um, go. yeah yeah and so you know it is that wonderful sort of moment where you where you just go okay my ego self seems to get distracted my ego self doesn't is too afraid to take responsibility my ego self is so programmed away from knowing who i truly am 
So I've struggled enough with that. So I'm going to consciously surrender to the highest version of me, the soul self, and, and make that the master of my ship. And I keep talking about that, you know, give give mastery to your soul. Don't give mastery outside of yourself to a government, to a religion, to a, you know, a false belief of any sort, mm-hmm. whether it comes from your program mind or whether it, you know, comes from outside of yourself. It, you know, if it doesn't come from your heart connection, if it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't resonate and it doesn't feel like like a song, you know, where the heart is is in unison with with your vibrational frequency, then you know, don't put conscious energy into it, and that is so important. We are putting so much conscious and it's so much so much unconscious energy, and that is it. The subconscious is the unconscious energy, and yes. whilst the subconscious is still filled with the programming. It takes an enormous amount of power of consciousness to be aware of that so that you don't enact it. Mm. Yes. And then, you know, then we, because they're the neural pathways that are, that are set by the continuous repetition of that. And so to, to change that, we have to, you know, very consciously decide, you know, what, what's really out calling us from in here and then we need to create these new neural pathways by consciously going in a different direction. And so yes. this is really what the foundation of part two is about, is become more consciously aware of whether you are acting out of a programmed subconscious mind or whether you are, are consciously aware of enacting from the heart space. If, if you're not doing that, because I, I, I totally agree, the whole thing about going into this new earth reality is to become um, an intentional co-creator. And otherwise we're just a leaf in the breeze blowing around at the whim of the wind, you know, wherever the wind blows us. And, you know, that, that's a good analogy, I think, to, to really understand what that means. And it reminds me of someone I was talking to the other day who um, just as an example, they were following somebody on YouTube that they thought was, you know, a really great spiritual teacher, coach. And then this person, they, they sort of put a lot of um, faith and straw into what this person had said. And then this person that they were listening to said something really left of centre. <laughs> It was really a little bit, you know, absurd. It was a whole new thing that just came from, you know, goodness knows where. And then they were really thrown because this person that they'd been following who was on a certain track suddenly went on a different direction and had a whole different philosophy on on, on things. And, and, and then they were discombobulated within themselves. So that that's just the... Um, a physical reality version of what I was just talking about with the leaf blowing in the breeze. So you you can't keep your uh, rudder straight, you can't keep your centre or your foundation when this external um, input is coming in and creating who you are and what you want to think and what you want to feel. Yeah, absolutely. And look, there's so much out there that is willing to take you off course. You know so much out there and so yes. um you know really what we're what what you and i are really wanting people to hear from our discussion is to pull in your you know your distracted chatterbox mind and bring it into focus in the now moment mm-hmm. and the more that we live in the now moment actually the the easier life becomes because if you can do it in one second you can do it in two seconds and you know we only have the now moment but are we present you know are we present where are your thoughts and if if you're not present in the moment and hey, hey I'm sure, Medina, you'll agree you and I we've been doing this for a long time and we still drift off Oh yes, you know I catch myself. Oh, yeah. There's so much to learn. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I catch myself and I go, 
you know. <laughs> I don't know where I saw it. What am I just doing there? I'm learning it here. It does get better as you have more experience yeah. and, you, and you get older. I must say it does get easier and get better. But, oh, yes, always so much to learn. But breath, breath work, you know, that's a really way, great yeah. way to be embodied in the now moment and to be present, to focus on your breath. Another way is just to really focus, for example, on one part of your body, just focus on your finger for a moment and yeah. just really focus all your energy on that finger. That's a really great way to develop self-mastery. That that breath work is is really, really important. And, you know, when we, it's a known fact that when we're stressed, we breathe very, very shallowly. So, you know, when you're breathing deeply and you're really conscious of your breath, that that these are physical uh, sort of tools in your toolkit that you can use to help with that. You know, there's a secondary thing to the breath work mm -hmm. and I'm not sure that people are conscious of it. Breath is life force entering into our bodies. Mm. Yes. yes. So when you focus <laughs> on that breath, you mm -hmm. are tuned into the life force that you really are. Yes. And it's very, very powerful stuff. And that is why it is so strange and, you know, that people are asking you to do things to curtail that breath. And that's when you say, no, thank you, I like to breathe. You know, people are always asking me, so what do you do for a living? And I go, I breathe. What do you do? Well, they're not silly, the dark. They know how important breath is. Yeah. And to our, to our um, evolution, to our well-being. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so they, they, they've formulated these strategies because these are the strategies that they think can most undermine our um, spiritual evolution and growth. Well, you know, I've enjoyed this discussion with you again. I don't know if, uh, you know, people, you can enjoy it, but Medina and I, we've been in the zone. <laughs> so if you want to be in the zone, then, you know, just look at us. We're just these very consciously aware people that just are in the zone and enjoying it as conduits of our true nature and really focused on becoming this new earth human so that we move into the new earth of the golden age, which you are doing this documentary about and I'm really excited about. If you want to connect with Medina, well, um, there our links in the description box um and please do visit her youtube channel and um she has so much wisdom there and she is prolific on screen i can tell you um and that she and she does have other guests on her and they're wonderful and if you want to follow my work or connect with me then you know also the links are in the description box and and we are planning to do this again not next week because I'm going to go up a bit closer to you. I'll be up in Queensland going to a, a beautiful wedding yes. of a very new earth human and, and well, two new earth humans, and that'll be very nice. So we'll skip a week and in that time, why not practice being a new earth human and just being more consciously aware, but most of all, just something that you said I'd really like for me to complete on, and that is you said, you know, um, you are enough or I am enough. So on my mirror, so anybody who comes to see me for a one-on-one -on -one or a workshop that I do in my home, they go to the bathroom, I have with lipstick written, you are enough. <laughs> so... It's very important. You can't wash your hands in my house without knowing you are enough. <laughs> Thank you, Medina, once more. It's been a That's delight. I love that. And I look forward to us, you know, doing this again. And um, everyone, just love yourself more. You are creation in motion. You are God consciousness in human form. Don't let anybody tell you different. Thank you so much, Medina. Would you like to complete with some wise words from you? Oh, <laughs> I think <laughs> well, I, I think that um, my message would be that as we go forward as creators, knowing that everything 
that is around us is made of atoms and those atoms are there for us to um, influence in the way that we choose. We, if we choose not to influence them, they can go off and do whatever they want, which may not be in our best interest. <laughs> but if we want to create our own best reality, the atoms around us in, in every form that exist are there for us to co-create what they are to do. So, for example, when you're eating food, in, in those uh, atoms of the food, you, you give a beautiful blessing and that you're co-creating the best possible um, uh, quality of food that you can eat through your um, conscious intention. And, and I think that's part of going into this new reality is just to know that we have to be responsible for being these co-creators that are influencing every single atom around us at every moment. And if we don't do that, that's slipping into the 3D, which is going backwards, which is where we just allowed everything to happen willy-nilly. And that's how we got to the sort of uh, the, the, the sort of uh, dire state in many respects that we have on the earth because we just allowed that to happen. Uh, we, we can't continue doing that. We have to learn to um, exist as a co-creative creational force. Thank you so much. Very wise words. Have a wonderful couple of weeks. We'll return and we'll have more words of wisdom. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.